how is he taken up with Candace Owens? And then you mentioned this fact about statistics, and that's exactly how. Oh, no, 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 no. no. To be clear, when I, when I asked you that, it wasn't like, um, how can he even listen to her? I was just curious what the connection was. Like, how the yeah. f*** do they meet? But no, I totally yeah. understand why he'd listen to her. Because she's probably the first one forever that in his mind, it's like, Sneeko, Candace is speaking facts. I've talked to these yeah. progressives forever. They tell me nothing's wrong with Jews. They tell me nothing's going on, blah, blah, blah. And then I talk to Candace. She's like, well, let me tell you some shit. And now she's talking all these facts that align with all of his lived experiences. And it seems like she's probably right about everything, right? Yeah, of course. I yeah. totally understand. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really unfortunate. Do you have any opinion on the Jess Pearly things person? Do you know that? <sighs> Well, what's up? Uh, um, Come here to bitch about more of my content or complain about something else or, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, it's been happy days. I sleep so much better now that I know that Mr. Girl's sleeping so much better from not being on your Discord. So I think things are much better nowadays, man. Okay. But yeah, I um, we want to come ask you in regards to the uh, Kanye West, uh, Lex Friedman conversation. How did you feel watching that? Thing unfold. You saw Ari Emanuel do exactly the kind of thing that I was saying had been done behind closed doors. Now he's doing it and open doors. They told Candace Owens, I couldn't be on the Daily Wire. Like you can't even explain yourself. And we don't care how, how you got to that point either. And that's fucked up. So is there somebody in your life close to you that, that you trust enough to call you out on your bullshit? We're all Ooh, full shit sometimes. Good question. What's my bullshit? Oh, well, some of it I pointed out today, but I don't what know you deeply bullshit, enough. Though? What was the, the bullshit? Jewish media, Jewish. That's not bullshit. The bullshit is that the Jewish media no, no. won't admit. No. Your dad was right. <laughs> Your dad was right. The, the words you used, the you weren't. The and point I you said were, it. You're not gonna make me say it 800 more times. I don't know if it resonated because you keep saying like the words. Did it resonate to y'all that y'all ain't do nothing about it? And that all y'all want to do is have somebody apologize and sweep under the rug your bullshit that you've been doing the whole time. Yeah, you, you on the same bullshit as the other people. So you're doing the same thing that the other, let's say media, because I'm not allowed to yeah. say, has done. So until somebody which is what, up, which is what, man, is, which is what is I'm trying to call you out in your bullshit because I hope I'm somebody you can trust. I That's don't it. can trust you. <laughs> oh, well, you should find people in your life you can trust. Don't tell me what I should do. I'm not <laughs> one of your BLM oh, no. marchers. Did you feel like Kanye West came out looking more unhinged or more incoherent? Or do you feel like his views got fleshed out at all I think in regards uh... to anti-Semitism? I think he's uh, pretty unhinged. <laughs> okay. Can I ask you wh which part of what he says is super unhinged? All of before it. Before we just go on to like he's crazy rant. I think the issue we have is it's ironic because it's, it's the same issue that like conservatives have with black people. Um, yeah. Where um, I'll use black people since you can understand it better, you know? Uh, KKK, exam, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah, my energy Appreciate thing. Client, Thank yeah. you. But um, no, like the issues that conservatives have when they talk about a people is they'll usually talk about a thing they're doing bad and then they just like stop there. They don't ever like ask why. You know, like, oh, well, black people commit more crime, blah, blah. It's okay. Well, sure. Yeah, that's true. But like, why? Are we going to ask that? And it feels like Kanye does the same thing where he, he'll say like, oh, it's Jews here, Jews there, and Jews everywhere. And it's like, okay, well, anything else you're going to say? It's like, no. You know, they're me over. It's like, okay, well, that's pretty shitty. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's pretty much what I said, Dan, in regards to that conversation. Like, I think one can acknowledge it's not a cabal, but also acknowledge that there is overrepresentation of Jews. But it feels like you can't even say that portion. Um, true. And so, that is true, yeah. Is it unacceptable to say that? Like, is that a well, crazy thing Well, this is my say? issue. Yeah, this is always kind of like my issue with progressives. Is that like <clears throat> when you start making certain things illegal to say and you can't say them, everybody's going to look at it a little bit weird. And then we can't have a yeah. conversation about it, you know? Uh, but progressives yeah. do this with a lot of things where it's like they'll say that like, um, you know, like, thir do, you, do you know like 1350? Has anybody said that to you? Well, 1350. Like, uh, wait, I think I've heard you make that joke when you were wishing death on somebody. Okay. No. <laughs> I didn't do that, but uh, nice try. Uh, no, but isn't 1350 is like, despite being 13% of the population, black people commit like 50% of violent crime or something, right? Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> no way. I don't know what crazy <laughs> shit you're... I don't know what you're on. Just wiping my brow right now. That, <laughs> yeah. that almost got really spicy for no reason. Like, yeah, 
But uh, uh, you're thinking of the 41% thing, which is about trans suicide, which is also another joke. Hey, I listen, all I know is every time you utter statistics, that's wishing death on somebody. That's just how it works. Sure. But like, listen yeah. to the joke you just made, right? Like, there's a lot of people that kind of believe that now, and that's a problem. We have to be able to have like difficult conversations about- uh, Believe what, exactly? That you can't even talk about a stat without it being problematic. And that's not good. Absolutely. Yeah, that's bad. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and now you're seeing people like Kanye West, who's probably a lot a bit crazy, and a little bit right, where he's like, why is it when I talk about this shit, you know, everybody's trying to cancel me and blah, blah, blah. I was like, yeah, you know, that's a good point, you know? There are a lot of Jewish people that do media. There are a lot of Jewish people that do entertainment and music stuff. We should be able to have those conversations because when you don't, now you're making it sound like it's not just Jewish people there. There's like a Jewish yeah. plot. And yeah, right. that's scary. But do, you, but do you remember the question you asked me? You said, what is wild is that he's like, how is he taken up with Candace Owens? And mm -hmm. then you mentioned this fact about statistics, and that's exactly how. Oh, no, because no, no, no. To be clear, when I, when I asked you that, it wasn't like, um, how can he even listen to her? I was just curious what the connection was. <laughs> like, how the yeah. f*** do they mean? But no, I totally yeah. understand why he'd listen to her. Because she's probably the first one forever that in his mind, it's like Sneeko. Candace is speaking facts. I've talked to these yeah. progressives forever. They tell me nothing's wrong with Jews. They tell me nothing's going on, blah, blah, blah. And then I talk to Candace. She's like, well, let me tell you some shit. And now she's talking all these facts that align with all of his lived experiences. And it seems like she's probably right about everything, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I totally understand. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really unfortunate because I think the left has the correct positions, but the way that they go about it really turns people off so much that they rather listen to the other side. I, I have a friend in my group chat and it's so crazy. He, um, do you know what, is it consonance? You know what consonance is? Sounds like a religious word. name, but go ahead. No, um, you know when somebody can't hold their shit in anymore or, or hold their piss in because of like kidney issues or whatever, all of a sudden they just start. Oh, it's whether you have, I think it's continence. I think it is. Yeah. Because if okay. you're incontinent, uh, that means you can't do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I said the wrong one, but yeah, appreciate that. Um, so he was, <laughs> oh my God, he was at like Farm Pharma Plus or like this is like Shoppers Drug Mart or whatever you guys have. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he sees pads for men and he takes a picture and he puts in the group chat and he starts losing his mind he's like look how they're fucking trying to feminize men now they're trying to say that men this whole trains agenda they're trying to get men to wear like tampa and i'm looking at the thing and i'm i'm thinking of reasons why there would be pads for men i'm like wait i'm pretty sure there's some old people who might need some shit like there's some people with medical so i look it up and it turns out to be the case yeah and so this guy's having a completely like nutty reaction to something that isn't real, okay? Mm -hmm. And the first reaction, a lot of people in the group chat is like, "Yo, you're crazy. This is nonsensical." And then I just asked him, "Like, I'm like, why, why, like, why are you so peeved? Like, what are you? What makes you so reactive? Like, did you see something recently?" And he's just like, "I've just had enough. I like had <laughs> enough of what? Because like, I'm just tired of these people. I just hear about it all the time. They're trying to invade the schools." And I realized, like. And, and then he, he later on confesses like he doesn't he's not like able to talk about this online or whatever mm -hmm. and i realize that for a lot of these people they feel like they have valid um they feel like they have valid concerns but they don't have any avenues to openly discuss them or yeah. talk about them without being absolutely shellacked with judgment mm -hmm. and to be fair there are some valid concerns in regards to maybe some aspects of education or things like that or at least there should be forums for discussion there but they feel like they can't do that without being labeled um, yeah like it's both like Drugs to change a person's gender, that's a scary big thing, right? Or to change a person's sex and biology, that's a scary thing. And when you're talking about children that are historically known to be fucking stupid, it's reasonable that people would be highly skeptical about that position. That's a reasonable thing. Um, yeah. So like, you need to be ready to have that conversation, probably a lot, if you wanna persuade people that it's an okay thing to do. Like, I don't think that people, here is my guess. I don't think that the majority of Republicans, maybe even the majority of Americans, probably aren't even fully bought into things like ADHD drugs. If you can't get a child to take Ritalin without a parent freaking out, do you think they're ready for their t child to get on f estrogen? <laughs> like, that's a reasonable conversation to have with parents, and it's reasonable to expect you're going to have to be able to address those things. Yeah, and, and, and as I'm having these conversations with people <clears throat> about these topics, I start to wonder... So this is like something I'm, I'm having a hard time navigating. So you brought up the whole th idea of ADHD and drugs for kids and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you'll talk to people who have these views uh, that are rather extreme or they lean much more conservative. And one of them brought up something. And I'm not going to lie. When they brought it up, I didn't know if it was true. But if what they said was true, it sounds crazy. Okay. They brought up the idea of like um, – Apparently, in some states, they said, like, doctors can offer kids hormones without the parents' know-how. Now, yeah. when I first heard that, 
-hmm. I said, that sounds unhinged. But I couldn't counter it because I didn't know if what he's saying was true or not, or if he just heard some dumb talking point from somewhere. But mm -hmm. if what he's saying is true, that is absolutely a valid concern. Do you agree or disagree? And, and also, can you tell yeah, me, is that true or that, not? I, so I think it is true. <clears throat> and I think that for some, the problem is for some cases, I super understand. And, yeah. and all of us do. Well, non-conservatives. For instance, if there is a 17-year-old and they want an abortion and their parents are like religiously opposed to it, I can understand the need there for that child, you know, being able to get it without a parental approval. But mm -hmm. this is something, and I, I just can't communicate this. Um, this, I'm gonna, this is the, I hate it. I very rarely say this, but I'll say this, it's very cringy. But as a parent, the idea that my child can go and get a medical procedure done without me ever knowing about it, that is a terrifying concept. Personally, I would never want it to happen. I can understand from a government policy point of view, sure, but like that's my f***ing kid. Um, and so when people talk to other parents, I could understand why that one dude, um, the Nick Rikita guy, had that huge blow up about like kids doing this without parental consent. Because bro, those are your f***ing children that you Absolutely. are tasked with providing for, protecting, guiding, and you're talking about them being able to go to a doctor and get like sex changes without you knowing about it i that is i totally understand the insane reaction that a person could have to hearing something like that. absolutely like could you imagine that you find out that your child is like talking in like the cat boy ranch keffel server like and they've got people selling him like illegal fucking estrogen pills that he's getting online like it, that's a rough one like that you need to have conversations about that because parents are rightfully going to be like really skewed you know yeah so, so so this is where the issue lies right mm -hmm. because I, I feel like i'm on the right side of the issue in regards to like you know if they turn 18 they want to make their own decisions that's fine mm -hmm. in regards to transness you know whether it's the pronouns or whatever that's fine and then they bring up that example and it's so unhinged and i know it's a losing point it, like there's there's no way you could reasonably get most rationally thinking adults to buy into that point and, and if they harp on that long enough, I think that's why it becomes a big talking point in terms of like media debate, even though I don't know how common it is. Mm -hmm. if, if they expand on that point, it's hard for them not to win because you have to imagine kids are like what makes people the most reactive. For sure. Whether we like it or not, whether you think it's sensible or not, it doesn't matter. And they what should. If there are children, it should. Exactly. That's what we live exactly. for. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. People yeah. have a irrational because of the fact that they're so they leave it's they not care. even irrational it's totally oh, fair i get sorry, it yeah. Sorry, sorry. yeah what i mean is how would i say this so reactive yeah okay it's gonna be and good it's not always it. justified how reactive it is but we understand because it's your child you're gonna be hyper vigilant okay even mm -hmm. if it's not always warranted that's just kind of how parents are. yeah you gotta so be ready for it like what is your that that is a winning point if you go into a debate against somebody mm -hmm. and they cannot concede that you giving hormones to a child without the parent's consent is unacceptable. You sound unhinged to everyone else. You get what I'm trying yeah. to say? Or it doesn't so, have to be unacceptable, but like you need to get ready to have a big argument about that because that's that's not going to be a freebie. You like that's going to be a challenging conversation. Yeah. Oh, 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 it's an uphill battle. And, yes. and you're working, you know, like 10 miles back and this person's got water hydrated everything because to get people to buy into that, mm -hmm. I honestly think it's impossible. I don't even think there's a world where that's possible. I don't see a world where you could logically convince majority of parents or people who want to become parents that that is an acceptable thing. But people are trying to make that case. And so that's why I have a hard time sometimes when I go into these kinds of debates because this is such a hot button topic. I feel like I lose every time because I'm like, how do I even counter that? Like, that is, that is, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. So, how do you deal with conversations in regards to transits when someone brings up stuff like that and yeah, he, you know that liberals really are axing themselves on some of these points. Here, this is the reality, okay? The reality is, it's funny because somebody actually emailed me yesterday and they, they tried to say, like, isn't this a bad argument you, that you use all the time? And there, this is a bad argument. One argument that I give is that like, there, a medical conversation should only be between me, my doctor, and my child. I don't think the government should intervene in that conversation. And I'll usually use that against conservatives to try to like say that like, this is why we shouldn't make these treatments illegal. We should be allowed to decide these things, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but that's actually, that's a rhetorical argument I use that's effective, but it's not really a good argument because really the government should be involved in intervening sometimes. Um, so for instance, like let's say that you've got a 16 year old child and they're sick, but you're like, um, is it Jehovah's Witnesses don't allow for blood transfusion? transfusions or something um if you're part of that if you're part of a religious sect that is like outlawing like certain medical treatments then there probably should be the some government intervention that's like if your kid wants to get like medical help at 15 16 and your parents religions are opposed to it they should probably have the right to seek some sort of like uh you know like medical remedy there without the parents knowing you know um but the problem isn't over that point right the problem is that they don't agree that the 
prepubescent or the pre um, adult trans thing exists. That's the issue. Because I think if you think that trans issues are real, you don't have a problem with this. But if you think that trans shit is fake, then you have a massive problem with it. And I think that this issue over children becomes a proxy for your stance on transness, period, rather than just what you think the medical Ooh. rights of your children are. I think that's what it okay. is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this becomes a double time because I know people who are for transness and all that stuff, but also hear of like rare occurrences of people detransitioning and sure, that being for like sure. something that's kind of, that, here's what I believe. I believe that most parents look at their children and when they see risks, even if it's one in a million, they don't want their child to be one in a million. Mm -hmm. So the reason why they're terrified of child abductions from like random strangers, even though those aren't common and they're extremely rare, people still are hyper vigilant to those things. Yeah, when you sure. think of your child and, and putting them in a situation, you're generally thinking about what's the worst outcome scenario? How can I avoid that? And so I think even people who are maybe pro trans or do have like very favorable stances, they think of their child, they don't want to be their kid who makes a ra irrational decision or something that they might later regret and that they'd allow it to happen. Do you mm -hmm. agree or disagree with what I'm saying? That they would, say, repeat that last part again? That they, because you know your child, you know your child makes mistakes, they make decisions that they regret later or whatever. Oh yeah, and it's as like a, a As a person who's responsible and knowing that there may come a chance to regret that decision or mm -hmm. want to detransition or whatever it is, that it's irreversible in a lot of cases because of how much hormones are taken during puberty. So as a parent, even if I am for transness, it doesn't mean that I'd be fine with my teenage Being child. Being trans. <laughs> transitioning yeah. I, I think being trans and transitioning are, are a bit different but I, yes i think those yeah. things are different yeah. yeah it's 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 scary um and i can understand even people that are like like I, like if oh, fuck hold on i'm trying to think of how much shit i want to get because i'm gonna say like if nathan came out to me as trans right now and he was like i need puberty blockers fuck i don't know well because i don't live with him right now so i'm not talking about we would have to have a lot of talk about that. That's going to be, yeah. there's going to be a lot of conversation. That's not going to be like, oh, okay, Nathan, like hop in the car. Like, let's go, you know, Nathania. <laughs> like, that's going to be a, we're going, hold on. Let's make sure you know what's going on here, buddy. Okay. Cause you're, you know, <laughs> well, last year you were telling me you thought Five Nights at Freddy's was real. <laughs> this year you think you're a girl. Let's, let's slow down and have a conversation about what's going yeah. on. Like, yeah, I'm super sympathetic to that as a parent, of course. Um, yeah. Like, and there is a world where like my son slash daughter like could give me an argument where after some time and you know, we'd probably talk to therapists over it's like, okay, you know what? Sure, yeah, fuck it. This, it feels real. Everything you're telling me is consistent. We've talked to probably two or three uh, different like gender specialists and they, you know, seem to affirm as much. It's like, okay, you know what? Um, my job as your parent is to give you the tools that you need to be happy and safe and healthy in life. And yeah, let's do it. Even if I personally am kind of weirded out, yeah, fuck it, we're gonna go for it. Um, I would be, yeah, I'd be okay with that, but like, Damn, dude, I would just like, I would, I would lose it if I found out that my kid was getting illegal sex change drugs online. I would just oh, lose it. I would oh. lose it. I, my, my brain would, it's, it's like one of those things where it's like, what should the penalty be if somebody kicks a kid? And it's like, well, you should probably go to like jail for like assault and battery. And it's like, what would you do if you saw somebody kick your kid? I would fucking kill them. I would lose my fucking mind if I saw somebody kicking my fucking child. Um, so it's, yeah, it's one of those things that like when your personal feelings, your personal children get involved, like your brain is gonna shut off. It should, it has to. This is how society works. We love and protect our children. So yeah, progressives suck at having those conversations. They're very, very unempathetic towards the, the parental struggle there. Especially in a world where you're already trying to guard your kid from like 50 million fucking crazy things that are happening online, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when you're going into these conversations and, you're, and, and you see these losing topics that progressives are losing on to, in terms of like, you know, since we're heading into election season, I, I wonder for you, when you see progressives not letting go of these losing positions on these like fringe points, which if they just see a bit of ground, they would win so much. W what goes through your mind when you see that? I think that the people that argue them don't care about them as much because they're not, they don't have anything invested. This is, mm. I'm super generalizing here from a very limited set of people that have spoken to me, but it feels like almost every single real life trans person with something at risk would say something akin to like, listen, um, <laughs> f trans athletes and f trans four year olds I just want to make sure that I have the ability to get the drugs that I need to protect my life as a trans person at the, at the bare minimum at 18 and past. And then I think we need to have a conversation about being 14, 15, 16, 17. Because if I would have told my parents I was trans, they would have killed me or they would have shipped me off to some crazy religious camp. And 
the, I think that those are the people that I wish we could listen to for conversation. But those aren't the people that are having the conversations. The people that are having the conversations are people that are in the bluest parts of Florida that are shipping in sex change drugs from Brazil. They don't give a fuck what legislation passes because they're always going to be okay. They're overwhelmingly white. They're overwhelmingly wealthy. And a lot of them are like non-binary dyed haired people that aren't even on any type of drug. There's no risk to them. So yeah, I just it feels like that sometimes the people having the conversations are the most extreme people that oftentimes have the least amount of shit to lose. It's like when people talk about like, well, the really important important issues we need to talk about are, are like, um, you know, 12 an hour minimum wage, F that, that's not everything. We're not gonna do that. It's either 15 an hour or nothing. And it's like, homie, there's a lot of people that 12 an hour would f save their life. Like, that's great that you have that position and you live in Beverly Hills, but how about we do stuff that helps everybody and not just like the super niche positions you wanna fight for on Twitter. I think that's the issue is that the people that seem to be having these conversations the most are the ones sometimes with the least at stake. It triggers the f out of me, but. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> This is um, on this topic of weird rhetoric and people unable to let go of some stuff. I noticed this also when the abortion discussions began happening. I was really surprised um, spending time in the States. How many women are like um, anti-abortion even in some liberal areas? It's like much more common than I thought. And when I'd have these conversations with them, you'd hear a bunch of stuff about, uh, like, you know, accountability. If you did this, mm -hmm. you know, some really bad arguments. Um, and then eventually we'd go to this thing that was really strange um, on both ends. They would say something about 26 week abortions. Yeah. And, oh my God. And, and, I, and, I, and I'm like, that doesn't even sound. And I looked it up and I think it's like less than 1% happen after 15 weeks or something. Like mm -hmm. most of them happen well before then. So I was wondering why people were like harping on these like very fringe examples. And then on the opposite side, people bring up like rape children and abortions, or like how inhumane it is to, you know, Mm -hmm. For somebody who's been raped to keep their aborted, to keep the children, not allow them for an abortion. I'm like, how much of the abortions are children who are born of rape or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So I wonder for you, why do you think the conversations always happen on these extreme examples who aren't representative of the issues? Mm -hmm. As these are like kind of like the spearheads used to like legislate what's happening more so in the middle. Yeah, this took me a long time to figure out, but I think I actually have the actual correct answer on this. And I think okay. it's because it's not about who believes in what or how many people do a particular thing. It's how many mm -hmm. people defend a particular thing. That's okay. the issue um, is <clears throat> you'll get these people that will talk about like third trimester abortions. And when people talk about shit like that, like you need to say like, okay, that's no good. Like let's, we don't do that. Like let's move on. That's not part of the conversation. But the problem, and, and they're very, very, very rare. Like third trimester abor abortion is, that's super rare. But the problem is everybody in the left will jump, or not everybody, but some people will be very loudly defending the right to have like late, ter late like third term, abor uh, third trimester abortions. And it's the same thing with like the trans kids too. Like there aren't that many people saying my four year old is trans. That's just, that's just not happening that much. It's silly. But when it shows up on Twitter, there's a lot of people that are willing to defend it. And I think that's where the outrage comes. Um, something that I always advocate for people to do, like if you're a progressive, like bro, it's so easy to just say like, oh, this thing, that's for fucking lunatics. I don't defend that. And I'll do that immediately in debates. And I can disarm an opponent sometimes because they'll be like, well, what do you think about people that say you should be able to abort a baby right before birth? That's fucking stupid. I don't agree with that. Let's talk about something else. And then you just move on, you know? Okay. Because, I, you know, I there's said. a lot of loser arguments that like, ter like shut people's brains down. Yeah, so you just basically see ground during those discussions as as just to show one that you also can acknowledge from their perspective that some of it is crazy. Yeah. And you think that's like a good strategy to at least build some bridge between you two? Yeah, and then move the conversation to more productive areas, right? Yeah, because when you have people defending extreme positions on your side, then mm -hmm. um, they're motivated to take up an extreme position on their side because they feel like if they give any ground, they're, they're giving into terrorists essentially, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I think that actually works out pretty well. I think that's what I ended up doing is I see the ground to that because I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> the baby's about to pop out any week now and you have an abortion. I think it's drastically different than um, the first few weeks. But cool. All right. Well, I think that do you, much um, answers my question. Do you, uh, do you have any opinion on the Just Pearly things person? Do you know that? Uh, oh, hold up. Have you seen the clip of her talking about birth control? Oh, no, no. Okay. <laughs> is it rough? <laughs> All right, all right. This is this is when I start looking at these people, and I, I become a little bit suspicious. Okay. Um. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the clip. It's time stamped, oh so you don't even have to do any work. Okay. Because I've already uh, filmed a reaction to this that I haven't put out yet. Oh shit. Uh, but I'll let you watch it yourself on stream. 
and then you can give me your thoughts after you watch that. Um, I Watching. believe. Do I believe? Yeah, I you it's pull it up on Twitter. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I'm not claiming I have all the answers. Of these, course, you don't have all I'm the answers. We just I, talk. We have, have a conversation. Yeah, yeah. So I have a couple solutions. So I have a couple ideas. I'll I tell love you. It. I'll Let's, tell you. I'll tell you. Ideas. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you. Time. I'll tell you. The first idea I have. I'm gonna start a wife school. I love it. Yeah. So we're gonna turn 304s into wives. Let's let's stop. So that's Let's, first. That's my first idea. Can we can we stop right there? Okay. You want to go through all the ideas? No. You you ask me. I'll tell you. All I want I want to talk about that one. Don't forget that one. I want to talk to you about that. Yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. Keep on going. I got you. We're having my, fun, guys. My second idea, my second idea is um, I'd like to run for an office someday because I feel like for in order the laws to change for men, women have to do it. So, I love and it. if this was pro's world, I'd get rid of birth control. I'd ban it, but I, that'll never happen. A lot but of men won't like that. If this, a lot of the men, that's my guy right here, he said, hell no. Nah. You don't get rid of that, baby. Yeah, <laughs> if, this is, if this is pro's world, I'd ban birth control. Yeah, I, I think that's the root of all evil. Uh, and like and I'd actually go further. I'd go further. Go but, ahead. But say I'm, it. I'm kind no, of say extreme. It. Say it. I, I, don't, I, don't, say I don't think women should know. Huh? I don't think women should vote. Lord Jesus, keep on going. <laughs> yeah, that's no it. women, you can't vote. No birth yeah. control. Yeah. Keep it going. Because okay. it's always freedom without responsibility. And I so, love like, it. The reason, women should not vote. No, but, Pearly but said I'll it you, herself. I'll tell you why, though. I'll tell you why. Because it's freedom without you responsibility. You get the part where she talked about And before this. women, like, the like I believe in consequences for your decision. So the men know if they vote someone batshit crazy into power, you guys get drafted. We don't. Women decide elections. We're 55% of the population. I think if we want to vote, equally draft us. Y'all want equality. And personally, I don't want to get drafted, so I'll be in the kitchen. She said <laughs> women, no voting. Let's go. I want more solutions. <laughs> Keep it going, Yeah, Bernie. yeah. This is, if this is my world. That'll never happen, though. But Keep it going. I world, love this. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Okay, yeah. so, so. So you okay. want to start with wife school. Let's start with It was over the draft. Do you want me to? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Jesus. So, yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you understand why I wanted you to play that clip first? Okay, yeah, I got it. So the guy across from her, Hafiz, was like super cringe during that whole debate. But I remember I just heard this portion and I like, I literally had to triple take. I said, what? Um, and I think it's moments like these where I kind of laugh a lot because like um, you'll hear people say like, oh, the bird pill, it's not about misogyny or any of this stuff. But then you hear some of these takes and you're like, what the fuck are you smoking? Like, in what world are you saying that women can't vote and, and women shouldn't be allowed to vote and women should have access to birth control? And you won't think that your movement won't be perceived as extremely misogynistic. Mm -hmm. Like, in what world? So you mentioned her specifically. I think she's pretty cringe, to be honest with you, gotcha. when I hear takes like this. But I haven't watched her entire takes on aggregate, so I couldn't make a, a solid assessment. But that clip of her, like, really threw me for a loop. So um, that's my thing. What, what was your perception? I don't know. I got invited to maybe do a show with her, so I was just—I haven't watched any of her stuff yet, though. So I was curious what your opinion is. So, but I see what oh, kind hey. of fight I'll be fighting now if I do. <laughs> hey, man! I told you before, just like the first shit, you go on there and make your own opinions. Don't uh -huh. let me color your shit at all. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I, she's asked me before to do it, and I'm, I just—I'm I'm not interested. But uh, uh -huh. oh, you know. are you allowed to say what you're doing in a couple weeks? Have you said? Uh, no, not yet. Once I finalize all those details, but I'll be—I'll uh, be in your hood. Uh, in two weeks, so I think me and uh, Simon will be there. Yeah, you. Uh, I found that out. Not from you though. So from yeah. Simon. Yeah, you know, if you uh, didn't want to tell me, or you were just gonna come and go without saying anything, you know, that's cool too. I'm okay with you. Just you know. No, no. Uh, I figured no, I'd no, tell it's Simon. Fine, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's cool. You know, you don't have to. You know, you just. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me, right? You know, it's all good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No worries. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure you got other people to keep you company, anyways. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, as far as uh, as far as this girl goes, I don't know. <laughs> You could take time to debunk that whole idea, and I think it's, it's a stupid argument. But uh, it's just when I hear stuff like women shouldn't be allowed to vote, like how do you even respond to that? So yeah. So yeah, but that's all I pretty much got for you, brother. Okay. Well, hey, thanks a lot. Stay safe. Be careful. Um, yeah. Love you, buddy. Bye. Peace.